Hey guys, uh, wanted to uh, make an update for you on my uh, latest surgery, though I'm kind of tired of making videos about surgery, so I, it's one of the reasons I took so long to make this one. Um, anyway, so so I've really been through something with this surgery. Um, the thing about this this surgery is it wasn't really even on my radar to have a problem with the surgery. It, uh, from all my research that I, you know, take so seriously, um, it seemed like the testicular implants were a pretty easy, easy surgery to get through. You know, um, not a lot of recovery time. You just make a couple slits, you slide them in, and uh, in about a week you're good to go. Whew, that's just not... Uh, not how it went for me. Um, so, well, I went, I had the testicular implants, I had my fistula repaired, and I had a revision to my top surgery. My top surgery revision, I'll make a different video about that, but it's awesome. I'm so happy with it, but I'm not going to say more about that right now. Um, so the testicular implants, my right testicle is awesome. It's great. It healed like even the incision was healed within a few days. My left testicle did not have such luck. Um, I had a huge amount of post-operative swelling and the left side of my scrotum became so swollen that it cut off blood supply to that half of the scrotum. And the way Dr. Crane does the scrotoplasty, he takes your uh, outer labia and he forms them and fuses them together up the middle. So each side is its own little animal. So when the blood supply got cut off on the left side, it only affected the left side. Um, so what happened is the skin over probably 90% of the left side died. And usually at that point, uh, your body, uh, your testicle needs to erode. So it needs, your body pushes it, wants to push it out, it extrudes it. Um, my body, however, wanted that testicle to stay in very badly so it started to grow new skin over the implant rather than extrude it. So what I ended up with was the equivalent of a second degree burn over the left side of my testicle because all of the epidermis uh, had been destroyed and several layers of the dermis had been destroyed and there was now new skin trying to grow back over it as new skin similarly would be trying to grow back over a burn. This was all very painful. Um, and I would even borderline excruciatingly painful. Um, I could not walk, I couldn't get out of bed. The flight home was probably one of the worst experiences of my life. Um, and then after all that is said and done, wait right here, I'll be right back. After all that was said and done, despite my best efforts to save my ball, here it is. It uh, ended up extruding out anyway, which that in itself, just, you know, think about it. So you've got your testicle with the equivalent of a second degree burn, and then this gets pushed out of the skin that is already very unhappy. Um, and I'm, I'm smiling and laughing about it because really what else can you do at this point? Um, so my options when I, once I could see the testicle coming out of the skin, which I could see about half of it coming out kind of like this, my uh, option was to try to pop it out myself or find a doctor. And I was fortunate enough, um, my endocrinologist was willing to take it out for me. God bless her, um, because I could not find any doctor in this armpit town I live in to uh, uh, look after a trans person. So uh, she covered the testicle with lidocaine, made a tiny bit of a slit and popped it out and my relief was instant. Um, that was about four days ago and it's healing up, I can walk. Um, I, I have been having to go to work which has really been special. It's, it's been really mind over matter with going to work. Um, my testicle's getting um, 
my they're getting better, but I still have uh, the super pubic catheter in while I wait for my fistula fistula to heal, and that's uh, that's its own thing. I probably can show you guys that too. I know so many of you are curious about my surgeries, but you know if you're not a trans guy, I'm not giving you access to my blog, but I can show you my tube coming out of my stomach. So I'm having to I'll try to get it in the right light. There it is. So that is the tube coming out of my stomach. And uh, that's how I pee. So I'm having to cruise around work with this uh, catheter and balloon in my bladder, which pokes me every time I bend around. And uh, it's right on my pants line, so the tube going to my stomach gets rubbed all day. And I've got this one swollen ball and this other ball that is just a sack with a one inch slit down it. So it's uh, really been a thing. So, um, the hardest thing about this surgery is that I wasn't expecting to have a problem. I had psychologically prepped myself in the last surgery, like, okay, you know, there's a pretty high chance I'll have a complication. Most people have complications for this type of surgery. You know, I was really braced for the pain and the suffering and the downtime, and I had made preparations at work. Um, I didn't do any of those things this time. I, uh, I should have. Uh, because all of those things have really complicated things for me. You know, I had to go back to work before I was ready. Um, Tiff wasn't prepared to have me, you know, be down for so long and then get home from work and just have to crash because I was in agony. So it's really been a, it's really been an experience for me. But um, I feel like I'm on the other side of it finally, which is why I finally surfaced to make a video. Um, I. You know, even after all of this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't change a thing. I'm so happy with, with my private parts in general. You know, I of course, am bummed that I lost lost my left nut. You know, I'll never, I'll never use the expression I'd give my nut for that, lightly again because I literally have given my nut, and this is now my most prized souvenir. Uh, so, anyway, other than that, like I said. Uh, I've got three or four more days and I can take this stupid catheter out, which I'm really excited about. And uh, other than that, I'm just waiting for my chest to heal up. Um, I am so pleased with my chest results. I, I wish I hadn't waited two and a half years to have this revision because it's been a long, depressing two and a half years with that. So anyway, for all of you that have been wondering, uh, Thank you for your support. I'm alive. I'm well at this point. Um, I'm happy to be on this side of it, for sure. And for those of you that have been viewing my personal lower surgery blog, I'm really sorry about those gruesome pictures. Damn. This shit got real. Anyway, I'll talk to you all later.